now we're up to about six and a half billion dollars in added taxes that they're taking from British Columbians to pay for the things that they've offered. And in doing so, they still can't deliver on the promises that they've made. And that suggests to me that they're over-promising uh, to make people happy, and yet they can't deliver that because it's not fiscally possible. Just like in your household, um, you can promise your child a trip to Disneyland, but if you can't save the money, you can't go. And, and there's a, a reality here that we have to be wary of, only for Surrey, um, because that's where I live. Mm -hmm. um, what we've noticed is that the promises that were made are nowhere to be found in the budget. So the promises that were made to voters around a renter's rebate has evaporated, it's not there. Uh, the promise around eliminating portables, there's no, no new money for schools in Surrey. Uh, there's no new money for a Surrey hospital. It is not in the three-year capital plan, which is what this budget covers. Mm -hmm. So despite promises, they're not delivering for Surrey. Hey everyone, welcome to Darpen Dialogue. The BC NDP government released the budget earlier this week. Here is a snapshot from BC Budget 2020. The province projects a surplus of $203 million for the 2019-21 fiscal year. Around 10,400 new licensed childcare spaces have been created over the past two years and 28,000 kids received care that costs less than $10 per day. A new grant for students was announced, the BC Access Grant for low and middle income post-secondary students up to $4,000. A sales tax is being added to sweetened carbonated drinks such as pop, a charge that will also apply to vending machines and soda fountains. PST is being added to entertainment services such as Netflix and Disney Plus as of this July. And there's a new tax bracket for the top 1% of income earners, those who make over $220,000 a year. Now we spoke to Liberal MLA for South Surrey, Stephanie Cadu, to get her reaction on the budget. Ms. Cadu, most welcome to the program. How are you doing? Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, to, wonderful to chat with you this morning. Okay, great to have you as well. Uh, with that said, your reaction when you first saw mm -hmm. the budget? Well, I wasn't overly surprised the, uh, with the budget. The minister had said previously she would balance. So it is a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. It is a balanced budget because they've added a bunch of new taxes. Um, taxes on high income earners and on things like Netflix, and pop. Um, and with those, those changes, they've managed to balance the budget and uh, on a, with a razor thin surplus of about $200 million. And that sounds like a lot of money, but it's not on a $60 billion budget. And those are the things that it's important for critics to pay attention to um, because it's important that our job is to point out the things government doesn't want you to see and doesn't want to tell you. And this budget is risky for government and for taxpayers because ultimately if there's a downturn in the economy and, and all of the winds in the economy suggest there is going to be, uh, then taxpayers are going to be on the hook for a lot more money because they've committed to a lot of spending in this budget. Have you had a dialogue with um, Minister of Finance Carol James? At this point, no. Uh, the dialogue that happens happens during the estimates process, which we will get on get into uh, over the next few weeks in the legislature, and that's a time when we'll get a chance, uh, ministry by ministry, to examine the budget. But at first glance, there's uh, what we've noticed, and certainly for Surrey, um, because that's where I live, mm -hmm. um, what we've noticed is that the promises that were made are nowhere to be found in the budget. So the promises that were made to voters around a renter's rebate has evaporated, it's not there. Uh, the promise around eliminating portables, there's no, no new money for schools in Surrey. Uh, there's no new money for a Surrey hospital. It is not in the three-year capital plan, which is what this budget covers. Mm -hmm. So despite promises, they're not delivering for Surrey. Uh, it's the same with childcare. People were, were promised $10 a day childcare, uh, this budget flatlines the, the, the amount of money going to childcare, meaning they can't provide any more than is currently provided um, after next year. And that promise then will be at the less than halfway mark to actually achieving uh, a $10 a day system for British Columbians. So there's a lot of things that have been promised that aren't going to be delivered as a result of the decisions that the NDP is making. So what would you have liked to see in particular? Well, I'll be honest, I'm yeah. happy that the budget is balanced. Right. I, I believe that that's an important principle right. uh, when we're managing taxpayer dollars. 
I would have liked to see them manage to balance the budget without adding new taxes because with the ones they've added now, we're up to about six and a half billion dollars in added taxes that they're taking from British Columbians to pay for the things that they've offered. And in doing so, they still can't deliver on the promises that they've made. And that suggests to me that they're over-promising uh, to make people happy, and yet they can't deliver that because it's not fiscally possible. Just like in your household, um, you can promise your child a trip to Disneyland, but if you can't save the money, you can't go. And, and there's a, a reality here that we have to be wary of um, because ultimately there's only one taxpayer and everybody that I know in British Columbia is working as hard as they can to get ahead and affordability is not getting better housing prices are going up there's uh, rent rents have gone up fifteen hundred dollars in the city of Surrey on average oh, and and that's not making it easier for families despite what the government would like you to believe Okay. Well, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts and thanks for taking the time. No, thanks very much for having me and look forward to speaking with you again. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Stephanie Cadu, Liberal MLA for Surrey South and Finance Critic. Watch DARPEN's videos on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Like, share and subscribe.